Let's do it. This is how you see Hey, this is how you see Hey, keeping the faith in the king, and the patience will give us the strength. All right, today's class is going to be it's called Any Error Against th This People. Any Error Against This People. This class is going to be uh, an understanding of uh, what pretty much everyday life that you're going through and all these things, and you are seeking blessings, you're seeking understanding, and there's, but there's error in your life. You're seeking for things, blessings, you know what I mean? And understanding this, the scriptures and walking in a better life and waking a better life, but yet there's error in your life. That's the thing. Let's go to Judith uh, 5.19 uh, and 20. This is, this is what you have to understand. In, in our walk in our faith and the error that we, we cause, which is, and well, I'm going to ask a question here in a second. I'm going to give it away in quick. I know you got it. Is it the five and yeah. This is the book of Judith, chapter 5 and verse 19. But now are they returned to their God, and are come up from the places where they were scattered, and have possessed Jerusalem, where their sanctuary is, I'm so, sorry, 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 20. Verse 20. Now therefore, my Lord and Governor, if there be any error in this people, and they sin against their God, let us consider that this shall be their ruin, and let us go up, and we shall overcome them. Okay, read that, 21. Verse 21. But if there be no iniquity in their nation, let my Lord now pass by, lest their Lord defend them, and their God be for them. And we become a reproach before all the world. The word error, what does that mean? What is that? What is the error in his people? Brothers, y'all need to raise your hand raise up high. Your hand. Raise your hand up high if you got the answer. Let me get a let me get a new brother. Been here for a couple weeks. Um, um Brother Ken, that's right. Ken, I see you, Ken. I was okay. I was gonna say the one in the purple. <laughs> Ken, what is the error talking about? To uh, make mistakes. Okay, I need a, I need a stronger word. No, no, no you, I'll give you the mic. Give you another chance. To error in your ways of doing things. Okay, what is that called for us? Not following the law, statutes. Okay, a three-letter word. Sin. Sin, yes, sir. You got it. <laughs> don't make it make it more hard. I, I, I know sometimes you hear a different word, and you think it's oh, just I made a little uh, a boo boo. <laughs> you know what I mean? I made a little boo boo. No, no, no. It, error is sin. You gotta, you gotta correlate that. And understand that. Get this? No, there's no gray areas with the Most High. You know what I mean? Are you in righteousness or are you in sin? There's no there's no ha halfway in between. Okay, you understand that? So let's read that again. Read, read 20. The book of Judah, chapter 5 and verse 20. Now therefore, my Lord and government, if there be any error in this people, and they sin against their God, let us consider that this shall be their ruin, and let us go up and we shall overcome them. But if there be no iniquity in their nation, let my Lord now pass by. Lest their Lord defend them and their God before them, and we become a reproach before all the world. So this is this is what the nations know about us. That guess what? If we're not on one mind, one accord, if we're not obeying God's commandments and we're in sin, they they're gonna take us over. It's happened. It's happened in history. You know the consistency of us what going into captivity and coming out of captivity. And then guess what? To go into captivity, what what we must do to go into captivity? Not keep his commandments, not hearken unto his counsel, not hearken unto his commandments, and then to come out of his come come out of this there's a, a bondage. You have to what? Keep the commandments, come back to his laws, statutes, and commandments. That's what we have to do. Um, let's go to Deuteronomy 28. This 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 uh, this scripture can this this uh, 
this is our pivotal point of our of faith, of knowing who we are and what we've been through, and what what and also what we should be going through, uh, in the, in the verse verses one through fifteen. But we always uh, we always go back to this because this is this is this is how do you know you're an Israelite? Because of these curses. Because this is how we know we are. This is how I know what we're in the situation we are because of these curses. Read. Yeah. Uh, this 15. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So these curses, this is a sign of us to guess what? We know that, that we are going to be in these curses because we don't keep the commandment. This is the error, this is the sin that we are doing that put us into the situation. The situation where we are now, the situation that we've been in since we got we, we got into to slavery, since we, our, our families and, and our, our, our our tribes have been, been splitting apart because of our sin. Give me 32. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thy hand. When did that happen in history? Let me get a young brother. Uh, when did that happen in our history? Um, let me see. I'm looking at some, some faces. I want to get some, some new faces. Uh, Melvin, what you got, Melvin? During the 16, um, 1600s, um, they were sold on auctions. Okay. And what what happened? Um, that you just something there. Who was selling auctions? And what so was so so our sons and daughters they were sold right in front of us on auctions. Okay. Um, example is that is um in a movie Twenty Years a Slave, the female, the mother, she kept on crying all day until she, they just got rid of her. Okay. 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 That's a good example. Uh, I want an example for today. What's going on today that we 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 are being in there? That's a good moment. Um, Christian. I can see uh, new hands up sometimes. Um, they're taking Issachar's children. The, um, they, uh, they're taking their, uh, their children at the camp. Okay, yeah, I'll pray. Yeah, I mean, they're spending home, and that's happened. That's that's just something. That's just something recently in the news is showing that that's always been happening. You know what I mean? I know people that have been deported, and their children have stayed here, and they have they've had they've had to go back to Mexico. Or they've had to go to another country, and their kids are still here, or vice versa. Uh, another, another, another thing too that's going on. Another thing. Mm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a hint. CPS. Isaac. The light bulb went on Isaac. I saw it bright over here. Child protective services. Child protection. What, what's happening with them? Um, someone can say you're uh, you're like uh, you're uh, disciplining your kid to to uh, not up to Esau standards or whatever, and they can just take your kids away from you. Mm -hmm. You have no might or power. Yeah, that's some, that's something light, but you know what I mean. What happens a lot? What would typically happening? What would typically happen? You know what I mean? In in, in these homes, is it just because oh he spanked his kids, oh we gotta take his kids away. Abuse. Abuse, but uh, and, and give me some examples, Joseph. Give me some examples in these homes because people are not just coming in. Or, oh, you know what I mean? These good homes and oh, we, these brothers just spanked his kids or, or or whatever. That's not what's going on. That's not that's not that that situation doesn't happen. Well, what they do is they create caste systems for us, so they put us on welfare in section eight, so they make it harder for us to take care of a family, let alone children. And then that's their excuse for whatever reason to separate us and put them in foster homes and things like that. Mm, so yeah, I, yeah, I can understand that. Well, I'm, I'm gonna give it to y'all. 
was, we're not keeping the commandments in our households. Kids are alone in pampers. Nobody's, nobody's taking care of them. So what happens when they go in there and the way they live, when they're, when they're living, if you see these videos, you go on YouTube and look at the CPS and, and some of these shows that they have in there, they go in there and they have horrible homes. The kids are not being fed. Stories of, bro of kids being thrown in closets for, for weeks at a time and with no food or with, with food and there's feces all over, stuff like that. You know what I mean? Because we have no... Uh, what it is no order in our in our household those things so things being being taken taken care of that's one way we we, we would take care of because we don't keep the commandments so guess what what happens as a result these children are taken away from us now you're not raising children under the law you're not raising these 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 children in what what, what is the understanding give me that scripture on it's in Sirach chapter is it 16 let me see it's just hitting right now uh, yeah, sixteen. Give me sixteen and one. Oh, okay. Sirach sixteen and one, because this is this is what what you you have to be thinking in your head when you have children. You have to be understanding that when you have these children in your household, that these are a inheritance to you. This is something that you're building. You're building the uh, the the kingdom of heaven. It's the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter sixteen and verse one. Desire not a multitude of unprofitable children. Neither delight in ungodly sons. These children are going to be unprofitable when you raise them that way. When you raise them without the laws and understanding, they're going to be unprofitable to what? To the kingdom of heaven. Neither delight in ungodly sons. So when you, you don't delight in these kids. You might have your kids. Guess what? Oh, I don't do that to my kid. Oh, I don't raise my kids in that. Oh, we, 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 don't, we don't do that. We don't do this. We're not. They have a clean home. Uh, I have an income. A uh, great income. They're going to college and all these things. They might even think they're raising them in that way, but guess what? It's dest it's still destruction for for our nation. Because guess what? They're not in, they're not practicing the commandments. They're not keeping the laws, and they're not guess what? Looking for the kingdom. They love this thing modern day called the uh, Babylon. They love the the thing they've made it. These are the people that are that are in the offices uh, voting and thinking that it's making a change for our people. They're the ones that make it, are mad at at their people and don't want to be with their people because guess what? They're not they're not they're not don't look like them or they're not in order in there like them. But they're not following the commandments. Read verse two. Though they multiply, rejoice not in them, except the fear of the Lord be with them. Read. Trust not thou in their life, neither respect their multitude. For one that is just, for one that is just, is better than a thousand, and better it is to die without children than to have them that are ungodly. Better this is for one is for the one that is just is better. Sorry, read that again. This is for, I got you. Read. for one that is just is better than a thousand. So one is just one that is keeping the commandments and in righteousness and guess what applying these laws. Is better than a thousand children, because those children is what they are profitable. They are profitable to to get in the kingdom. They are profitable to the understanding. They are profitable to grow in this nation. We're going to be stuck in the same situation. Esau's still going to be in charge, or we're going to be in the bottom. We're never going to see that the the the, the changing of our people. Because guess what? This is one thing what you got to understand. There, that one just guess what happens? He is a light among the the others. He's an example when he goes to, to work every day. He's an example when he lives his life every day. People are going to be looking at him and guess what? There's something different about that Negro. There's something different about that Hispanic man. Something, something making him tick differently. When it comes to Sunday school, he's not going to Sunday school. Why is he not going to Sunday school? But guess what? He's not, he's not up, up on, uh, on Friday nights and Saturday nights uh, getting drunk and looting and doing crazy things. He's not doing those things. He's doing something different th that we noticed about him. And guess what? You're, that's when they come to you and ask them, what is, what makes you, what's, what's wrong with you? What, what's, what's up with you? Why do, why do you not do this? Why would we invite you to do these things? You don't go and you, and you don't keep these high, high, holy days, you don't, uh, holidays. You don't keep these things. What's wrong with you? They want to know. They see example and they guess what? You become example among your people. Because we look at examples in, in different lights.
We look at uh, the leaders, so so-called leaders, politicians, so-called uh, sports figures, and we look at those those images. And then when they have error or sin, we just put it aside. Oh, it's okay. He cheated on his wife. He's been cheating for his wife for many years. Ah, it's okay. You know, look what he did on the court. Look what he did. Look, look what he did. What he did for his people. All these things you see, all the things, but the examples are of the scriptures, are not there. Read. Verse 4. For by one that hath understanding shall the city be replenished, but the kindred of the wicked shall speedily become desolate. So that, is, that you, you, you bring back a city in your example. And your children that you, you, you feed into these scriptures and feed, feed the, 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 the Bible into them, they're going, to, they're going to bring back cities. They're going to bring back the people. But guess what? In the multitude, they're going to destroy us. You're going to have wicked hit kids and wicked, wicked, wicked under, understanding of the scriptures and wicked understanding of the way of life. And this way you think, well, guess what? They're going to be uh, up in these uh, videos doing just dumb childish things uh, that we see on TV. You know what I mean? Uh, the way they dress, the way they act, how they are in school. We see them. We see, we see, we see all the times. We look at, at videos, for example, like when we get in trouble... And I mean, we as a people, when we when we're in in a school setting, we always blame Esau for everything. But if that person was raised right and how how to act among the adults and how to give respect to adults, nine times out of ten they wouldn't be in the situation they are. But they want to act. They want to fight with the uh, uh, authorities. You know, um, there. Let's go to Psalm one forty five and twenty. One forty five and twenty. This, these, these things that you're when, you're when you're raising your child and you have these errors but you're looking for blessings in your house you know you remember this you're a big example if you te teach them that it's wrong they're still going to adapt to what they see and they're they're critical when people when they're younger they have a real a mind, a, a mind of, of learning it's the first things that they see the first examples they see so they soak those examples out of the sponge so when they see you keeping these commandments in righteousness, and if, and 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 guess what? You're going to have errors, but guess what? Fixing your errors, fixing your sins, repenting from them, they're going to see that change. You know what? My dad did do this. My mom did do that. But guess what? Through these scriptures, they have they have converted this. They have changed. You know what I mean? They have changed these, these ways. The, this is not the same the same father that I that I was with. When, before he came in the truth, this is a different father. He's been changing. He's been hearkening to the voice of the Most High. He's been hearkening into what Mo, the Most High says. And at the same time, he's been seeing things too. Guess what? This is not the way to act. I've seen the way to not to act, and I've seen the way how to act. Now I have a choice. Read. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 145 and verse 20. The Lord preserveth all them that love him, but all the wicked will he destroy uh, read again, sir. I didn't get it. Psalm chapter 145 and verse 20. The Lord preserveth all them that love him, but all the wicked will he destroy. The Lord preserveth all that, that love him. Right? And that's the second part. But all the wicked will he destroy. Will he destroy. This is the same thing. This is what I don't understand. The, the, the scriptures in the Old Testament, it says the same thing in the New Testament. The very same thing, but when the people read it, they think, "Well, that's that's not the God. The God has changed. The Most High, the, the Most High has changed changed His mind. He's no longer the, the way that He is." But guess what? The same scriptures we read here are the same way, the same, the same understanding that we have in there. Uh, give me Ezekiel eight eighteen and four. Eighteen and four. He's giving. He's giving that. I'm gonna give you some some, 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 some scriptures. To give you to understand that he's giving you the guess what? You don't keep the commandments, you're going to be destroyed. You keep the commandments, blessing, understanding, and the wisdom is going to give them to you. Okay? Ezekiel, Ezekiel uh, 18 and 4. Ezekiel 18 and 4. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 18 and verse 4. Behold, all souls are mine, as the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinned, it shall die. 
the soul that's the sin the soul that sin it shall die. Give me a very famous scripture, Romans six twenty three. Give me Romans six twenty three. We must, we must <coughs> skip the scripture. Romans chapter 6 and verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. When you become, when you start keeping these commandments, you're going to understand and enter a spiritual mind that you guys what? Speak in the mind, the same mind, one, one mind, one accord in all the scriptures. You're going to get the understanding. Give me that, that uh, Psalm 111 and 10. Give me Psalm 111 and 10. This is a very, very heavy, heavy scripture. Because when you start, when you start keeping these commandments, spiritual eyes are going to be open to you. Because guess what? A lot of us have grew up, grew up in Christianity and never looked at these scriptures the same way we do today. We don't look at it that way. And we've, you've, you've walked, you've read these scriptures maybe a hundred, hundreds of times. And then the minute you understand it with, with you with, with commandments on your side, when you keep the commandments, it's a whole different life. Read. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 111 and verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise endureth forever. So the under, how do you get the understanding of the most high? How do you how do these scriptures open up to you? We just read. Uh, Tobias. Shalom. Uh, through fear in the Lord and then doing the commandments. Doing the commandments. And that's a good, that's a good understanding. That's what it is. The good understanding. Because we have a, we had an understanding. And we think we have an understanding of some scriptures. But guess what? The Most High is going to give you the right understanding. And guess what? We're, me and you are not going to get this different understanding. We're going to get the same understanding in these scriptures. I'm going to be speaking one mind, one accord. One mind, one accord. You know what I mean? Give me Sirach 8, 19, and 8, 19. Sirach 19 and 18. The book of Sirach, chapter 19 and verse 18. The fear of the Lord is the first step to be accepted of him, and wisdom obtaineth his love. This is the same thing that Psalms 111 and 10 is saying. Uh, read it again. Ecclesiasticus chapter 19 and verse 18. The fear of the Lord is the first step to be accepted of him. And wisdom obtaineth his love. So uh, wisdom obtaineth his love. What's his love? You should get it out. Commandment. His commandment. His laws. That's a, it, it's the same, the same thing. Read, read uh, 19. Verse 19, the knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. And they that do the and they that do things that please him shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. Same thing, exact same thing uh, with, with Psalm 111 10. And guess what? Uh, Romans 6.23. Life. The eternal life. That's what it's talking about. When you when you keep these commandments. When you keep his, his, his understanding, this and you're going to get the key, the key to commandments. This is this is the, the the things that we need to be be doing. Read verse 20. The fear of the Lord is all wisdom, and the knowledge, excuse me, and in all wisdom is the performance of the law, and the knowledge of his omnipotency. Okay. Let's go to Jeremiah 5 and 25. This scripture right here. I want you to highlight the scriptures. It's a very important scripture. I think about these things when you when you cause error in your uh, you you cause error in your uh, in your life, in your marriage, in your children, and all these things. This is a very heavy scripture. Y'all need to remember this scripture because this scripture right here is is pretty much. You ever have a scripture where it, it, it says the same thing everywhere else, but when that scripture says it the way it says it, you. It, 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 Resonates with your spirit more. This is right here. It's very plain and simple. Um, Jeremiah 5.25. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 5, verse 25. Your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withholding good things from you. Ouch. So when you 
are praying for things, hoping for things, having faith in things to come in your in your house. And it and it could and, I, and you know what it could be uh, it could be something materialistic, material things that you need uh, to get ne the next level of life, to get the you know to help your family or to build the, the kingdom of, uh, of a better. These things most high keeps you from them because guess who holds these good things from you because of your sin, because of your iniquity. When you say, you know what, I'm, a, I'm going to uh, want to do this, I want to do that, and all of a sudden he, he puts a door, he puts a, he puts a wall in front of you because guess what, I can't give you that. I can't trust you with that because you guess what, you still have sin in you. You still have an area. I can't give you uh, this next job because guess what, you're going to be, the wickedness that you have in you, you're going to just do more wicked. But guess what? When the Most High has faith in you, this brother is a righteous brother. I'm going to give him this because guess what? I know his heart. I know his mind and what he's thinking. When, when Solomon asked for the wisdom for his people, what did the Most High said? He said, I'm going to make this man the richest man in the world. Because I know he's going to do with, do with these things in a righteous order. He's going to give this, this uh, these things that I give him, he's going to utilize it and organize it in the right order for my nation. Because his in his mind in his mind and his heart, he has the same thing that I have, my people. My people giving them wisdom and coming back to these laws, statutes, and commandments. That's that's what that's when they, when, you, when you start calling it error, guess what happens? The most high disappears. And guess who's there? Who's there, who's there to control you? The other nations. Just how you read read in, in Judith. The other nations are there to take control. And guess what? They are wicked, and they have any way, anywhere, anywhere, any how that they want to please and use you. They're going to use that, and that's what guess what? Slave becomes in fact. That's where they, with the wicked when they use you and abuse you and put you in the side. That's what it is. Read that again. Book of Jeremiah, chapter five, verse twenty-five. Your iniquities have turned away these things. And your sins have withholding good things from you. These good things, when the Most High is talking about things, it's not just talking about these blessings. It's everything. Everything. Everything that the Most That's what it, what it says in Matthew, it, in Matthew 6 about... Uh, yeah, Matthew 6. Let me get it right quick. Matthew 6. Yes. 6 and 32. Yeah, 6 and... Yeah. Yeah, 33, 6 and 33. That's why it says right here. It's the book of Matthew, chapter 6 and verse 33. But seek ye the kingdom of but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So all these things shall be added unto you. And then this is talking about the mother. The father knows what you need before you ask it. He knows what you need and what, guess what? The destiny that he has for you. But guess what? When you're wicked, he, he, guess what? He's going to have to hold that from you. He's going to keep that from you because guess what? I can't give that to him. Especially, guess what? If you are an elect and you are here to, for this kingdom, to build this kingdom, I always use this example as, you know how you're walking in groups and you're getting somewhere, but yet there's always somebody in the back, they, got, they, they lost a shoe. They got a nail stuck, or we got to wait. The whole crowd literally stops. We have to wait for him. That's how it is in the kingdom. We have to wait for this brother to get right, because guess what? He's got to be it. He's already got a ticket. We can't enter. We can't go to the kingdom and say, guess what? Is everybody here? No, I'll turn back around. Now everybody's here. You still missing some brothers. You got to help your brother. You got to build him up. You got to go to uh, get him, because he, he has already signed that contract to be here. And guess what? Y'all gonna go around that that mountain again another forty years because guess what? You that you are not right. You're holding back the nation. When you have when you are in sin, you're holding back the nation. You 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 you're very selfish when you when you're in sin. That's what it is. You're holding back the nation. The most I can give you. Guess what? It, it might it might not even be about you. It might be about your children. You might be raising David in your own house, or Daniel, or Jeremiah. And guess what? By you being an error. Because most times not giving you blessings. He's not giving you the things that you need to raise that child in the, in the way you've been going. 
You ever seen those brothers that they, they got a certain spirit about them that guess what? They woke up and they just started like a vacuum cleaner eating this thing, this, this scripture up. Applying anything that they could apply about it. And the, but the Most High said, guess what? When it said, remember the Sabbath, that everything, not just the Sabbath, but everything, remembrance coming back. The spirit of your forefathers are being entering to you in life. And guess what? Nothing's stopping him. Everything that we need to do, and when he sees the examples, he's blowing up. So everything that he does, the Most High is blessing him because guess what? He's about his kingdom. He's about his nation. Give me, um, what we, 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 read Jeremiah again because I'm not that scripture. Just go back to Jeremiah. Make sure you highlight this description. It's very, very critical to understand. I guess what is what is what is, what is going on with me? What is going on in my life? The Most High is guess what? Keeping these holding with good things because guess what? You have error in your life. It's the Book of Jeremiah, chapter five, verse twenty-five. Your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withholding good things from you. Um, we hold these. Um, give me Romans, uh, Romans 15. Romans 15. I got. This is what you gotta understand too, because people. I have a lot of questions. Every time a brother comes up to me and says, "Brother, is this a, is it a sin?" I'm like, "Yes." Without even finishing the question, I say yes. A lot of times, guess what? They are a sin. It falls into something because they, everything's not written in here, but everything is written in here. You go after after you the wisdom that the most I give you, you understand how to diagnose the question or diagnose what they're really asking. Yeah, yeah, give me uh, is it four fifteen? Yeah, I think four times. No, 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 no. Let me get. It. I think. You, let me make sure right now. Right. Yeah, we, uh, yeah, 4.15. Romans 4.15? Yeah. It's the book of Romans, chapter 4 and verse 15. Because the law worketh wrath. For where no law is, there is no transgression. For there is no law, there is no transgression. But with saying that, that I have brothers tell me, Hey, brother, is it is it a sin for me to watch a movie um, on Friday night? If I bought the tickets in advance, um, the thing is, the thing with you, you brothers understand that is when you out there and it's already the Sabbath and it's dark and you out there watching the movie and doing these things. What is that? What what is what is that? Um, give me a scripture. You know what scripture I'm looking for? Um, who who screws your hand back there? Besides, again, yeah, somebody else raise their hand? Okay, Zerubbabel. I just like saying that name. Zerubbabel. That's why I picked him. First uh, Thessalonians 5.22. Okay, 5.22, that's what it is. Because guess what, I can't, I can't say it, but it, I can't say it. A lot of things people have asked me, I can't say it's a sin, but I tell you what, what? This scripture I give them all the time. This is the book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5 and verse 22. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Some? Read again. Abstain from all appearance of evil. All appearance of evil. All appearance of that. Guess what? It appears that you bought a ticket on the Sabbath. It appears that you bought popcorn. It appears that you, that's what appears when you see somebody out there. You out there teaching the the, the 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 to your family, you're teaching all these things that you run into them, they see you. Or they don't even run to you, they just see you. They well, oh, that brother was fake. I knew he was fake. He's out there buying on the Sabbath. He told me not to buy on the Sabbath. He got on to me for buying on the Sabbath. But he's out here buying the Sabbath. You know what I mean? And then guess what? The most high the most high the high holiday is set apart. Rest. You get all these six days to do all these things. And you want to do things on the Sabbath. People, uh, have people say, ask me, uh, can I sew on the Sabbath? 
the Bible says there's no law, there's no transgression. But brother, you don't want to be putting things on the Sabbath. You don't want to be doing things. That's why I tell you what, when it comes to the Sabbath, put everything aside. You know what I mean? Put it aside. Prepare. An hour, two hours before. Guess what? At an hour before the sun's down, I'm already at home. I'm already, I'm, I'll try to be at home. I try to try to, uh, to prepare myself and be, get ready for this. Like, do I got the food that I need? Do I have everything do I have everything paid for in my car? Do I have gas? Do I have all things? You know what I mean? All, the, all these things that you prepare yourself, these, the, you prepare yourself for not, not to sin. If you put yourself, well, I'm, my car needs gas. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait a little bit. Uh, I'll do it when I can do it. And then guess what? Come to Sabbath, you ain't got no gas. You say, well, I can't make it because I ain't got no gas. Or even not even that. Let's say you, you, let's say you don't have the money, but you didn't reach out to nobody. You didn't reach out, brother, can I get some money to make, make the Sabbath? i get you back. Or brother, can you know, I'm a little low on money, I need money, and I can't make it the Sabbath but you, because you didn't, you didn't reach out and ask. You didn't reach out and ask. You are what? Not not con congregating now. Now you guys no, or, or now you gotta fill up on the Sabbath to break the Sabbath to make it here. You know what I mean? Because you didn't prepare. You know what I mean? But those things, you, if you have to ask on certain things that they do on the Sabbath, chances are, guess what? If you can't do it another day, that's on you. The Most High knows. But the but but the scriptures are, are very clear on those things. No, read that scripture again. First Thessalonians chapter five verse twenty two, abstain from all appearance of evil. Abstain from all appearance of evil. If it appears to be evil, if you around the wrong crowd and appears to be evil, don't do it, brother. You know what I mean? Don't do it. You know what I mean? I don't know. When it comes down to the, to, to uh, Esau's uh, holy days, people like to ask this question. Right. Oh, well, can can I can I can I just go over? They got a family reunion, and it's going to be on a Saturday. Can I just come? I haven't seen my grandma in many years. They barbecuing you out there. And you ain't here. Appearance of evil, brother. Well, I, you know what? Grandma's coming, coming by. They're going to have Thanksgiving dinner. I'm not going to eat, brother. Appearance of evil. You have to sit yourself and not to be in that appearance of evil. You can't be in that situation. Don't put yourself in a church and being caught, caught red-handed. Your old crowd, your old people, all those things. Because guess what? I can sit here all day long and then tell you, don't do this, don't do that, and do that. But at the same time, most of you got to you got your own salvation. What what in your spirit brought you up to that point to say, guess what? Oh, it's okay. You know what I mean? Well, you know what? I'm not gonna open my 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 my, my business on the Sabbath. Uh, but you know what I mean? I'm gonna I'm gonna try to. Um, I'm gonna try to try to. Sell. The brother needs something. I need to sell it to him. No, brother. If you can, if it can wait, it can wait. You know what I mean? Let it wait. The Most High is going to bless you. The Most High is going to give you your your finances and you can get right. If you're right with Him, He's gonna get right with you. But you you want to uh, be uh, greedy or you want to, you know, break the Most High? You're not putting Him first. You're not seeking the kingdom first, as the scripture says. Okay. Um, oh yeah. Okay, we're at First Thessalonians. Okay, um, let's go to Acts three nineteen. Acts three nineteen. This is the book of Acts, chapter three and verse nineteen. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Okay, uh, what is, uh, repent, preach it for repent, 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 we hear those, we hear, that's a, that's a, that's an abusive Christianity word if I ever heard it, Christianity, that word before you came in the truth was destroyed so much in your past that when you, you came in here and you got the understanding of repenting, it was a totally opposite, totally opposite. Um, Joseph, Joseph. Make sure brothers are writing, writing this stuff. Up. Make sure I'm taking notes. 
Brothers should be taking your notes. If you don't have your notepad, make sure you ask pay some stuff. What you got, Joseph? Sure. It okay. says, repent ye therefore and be converted. And in Psalms 19 and 7, it says, the law, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. So mm -hmm. the law of the Lord converts you for you to be able to repent. Okay, I'll pray. That's the one. That's one. I'm looking for another one. One more. Um, Tobias. Uh, the book of Ezekiel 18 and 21. 18, and you go take 18 21? Let's get that. Let's get that. Book of Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 21. But if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he hath committed and keep all my statutes, and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. I like that one. I'm not going to knock that one. I like that one. Uh, give, me, give me another one. It's close to that one. So if you guys raise your hand. Um, Saxon. She got Saxon. Uh, Saxon. Sure. I got 1 Kings 8 and 47. That's another one. 1 Kings 8 and that one real quick. Um, Book of 1 Kings chapter 8 and verse 47. Yet if they shall bethink themselves in the land whether they were carried captives and repent and make suppl supplication unto thee in the land of them that carried them captive saying we have sinned we have done perversely we have committed wickedness. Okay, all praise is good. Uh, who got who got the other one in Ezekiel? Um, you got it again. You got a confused face. He just he's read one, but I think that was that was uh, Joseph. What you got? Ezekiel 18, 30, and 31. Yep, that's it right there. That's it. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 18, and verse 30. Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, every one according to his ways, saith the Lord God. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. So re repenting is turning from your iniquities. Repenting is turning from your iniquities. This is the problem with Christianity. They tell you the same thing. Oh, you need to repent from your sins. You need to repent from your sins. And it pretty much is, it's a, uh, what is it, a 180? Right? 180? But if you're in Christianity and you're 180 and you turn around. 360. You're, oh, 360. Yeah, 360. My bad. 360. You come and you turn around. The 360, guess what happens? If you're not repenting from your sins and you're not keeping the commandments, you're just you're a standstill. You're not going nowhere. That's the problem with Christianity. They're not going nowhere. They're telling you, oh, repent from your sins. First of all, they don't know what sin is. And then when they when they're going to with these high holy days and these commandments and these law statutes and commandments, they're not keeping them. They're in a standstill. So guess what? They're doing they're in the you're in the same Mud that you were in before. You ain't doing they no changes have happened. No conversion has happened. No turning has happened. You stay stay in the same sin that you're in. There's no cleansing. Um read read that read that one again. I like that. This this one is very heavy one. Read the hot, make sure you highlight these things. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 18, verse 30. Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel. Every one according to his ways, saith the Lord God. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. So iniquity shall not be your ruin. The same word we saw we're at. Where do we see that word ruin? Nobody heard nobody, nobody heard that word ruin earlier? Melvin, what you got? Um, Judith Bar 20. Oh, praise. Let's read that one again. That's the same ruin that he's talking about. You understand that when we were speaking, these prophets were speaking in the, in the spirit, 
They're a one by one accord. They understand what with the rule meant. They understand about Deuteronomy 28, Kitchen to 68. They've been through it, they lived through that. It's the book of Judah, chapter 5 and verse 20. Now therefore, my Lord and Governor, if there be any error in this people, and they sin against their God, let us consider that this shall be their ruin. That this shall be their ruin. Okay. Now let's go to uh, Psalms. No, we can read that one already. Psalms. Uh, give me uh, Acts chapter 4 and verse 12. Acts chapter 4 and verse 12. This is the same um, mind that, that, that these prophets were having. This is the preparation of you for your future of, how would you say, a uh, warning to falling back into sin. The book of Acts, chapter 4 and verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So there's another, another name, uh, and this is not talking about that the you got to have the name. This is not what they're talking about. It's talking about, guess what? The, the commandments, the word of God. Um, in this, uh, 13. Verse 13. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. This right here is when they when they when they saw them the Pharisees and them they saw them and they saw the boldness in Peter and John. That's what we tell you: be strong or wrong. You know what I mean? Be strong or wrong because this they they perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant man. They what they weren't they weren't in the what in modern day would be like the uh, they were scholars and they were they weren't in the uh, the way they were taught in the Christian in Christianity. You know what I mean? They mock, but the, the, the unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. They understood that they were with Christ. They were walking with Christ. They were learning with Christ. That's when you men come here and guess what? Get in, 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 and you're in the scriptures and keeping these commandments, you're going to understand that guess what? These are the true believers. They, they, I've read this Bible and guess what? They're applying the this they're applying these commandments they're applying these the, what the word says i see them they're wearing the fringes they're they're, they're speaking of good things they're guess what they're, they're, there's an example and guess what your boldness is going to be there they're not going to be like what well, hey bro uh weren't you wearing fringes yesterday oh yeah, yeah I, just, I just forgot to wear them today that's not going to be boldness you're not going to forget to wear your fringes you know, one day you wear your fringes, the other day you're not wearing fringes. You're not wearing just fringes on the Sabbath, and then the week you're not wearing your Sabbath. There's camps out there that do that. We don't do that. This is a consistent practice, day in, day out. It's not, you're just not going to be on one day, well, yeah, well, didn't you, uh, they were going to ask you if you, guess what, when you ca uh, uh, cause sin, that you're going to be uh, prideful about it. No, I didn't do that. But guess what? This is what I'm practicing. If you do do error, I'm practicing. Since I did do error. I repented from that. In Proverbs 24, 16. The book of Proverbs, chapter 24 and verse 16. For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. It's what you're going to fall on this walk, but guess what? You're gonna get back up and repent from them. You're gonna be come back to the scriptures. You're gonna say, "I'm practicing," and you're gonna practice these commandments. Because we have seen brothers where guess what? They fall and they leave. They go back into the world. You know what I mean? And the Most High gives them gives them that time to repent, and they don't come back. I've seen brothers guess what? They get so deep in the world, they guess what? They die. Oh yeah, we had one brother last year where he he was he came in with a. Uh, he came in um, right before right for me, so it's it been like my, my it's a good ten years, ten years, and he bugged out, went back in the world, started selling, started dealing, you know, started you know, women. He said went back, and the most high 
put them out last year. The most I put them out. They said it was suicide, but I don't believe it. You know, the most high, the most high took them out. You know, so it's, a, it's a scary thing with the most high. When you hear about death and this happens well, for whatever reason, the most high takes you out. Uh, whether it be just be, you know what? I had a uh, co-worker this week. I mean, she Esau, but her uh, father-in-law, he just, he fell and busted his head and he bled out. Nobody was there to help him. Maybe somebody was helping him out there, but the most high said, hey, you're done. You're done here. You know what I mean? Your time is up. I, uh, like I said, I said this a couple, a, a couple uh, classes ago. Brother said, what did he say? He said, there's worse things than death. And I said, no, there's not worse things than death. Because when you're dead, you can't repent. You can't get it right when you're dead. When you're gone, you can't get it right. They know, they know guaranteed you're going to come back. You can't, you, you can't fix the things is to fix it now. Those errors that you have in your in, in, in your in your in yourself in your household and 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 your king and your um in your nation is to fix it now to get it right to come back to these commandments and, and polish your walking in this faith. That's what it is. Um, give me Matthew twenty five and verse forty six. Almost done. I got a couple more scriptures. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 25 and verse 46. And these shall, shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. This is the same thing that it's talking about like, uh, on, in these scriptures that he's talking about. The same thing is talking about in the Old Testament, that the everlasting life is the commandments. That the life that's being breathed into, to Mo, into uh, Adam in the beginning, that's the same that's being breathed into us now. And it's these laws, such as the way of life, the way how we should live. But we don't, we, we don't, when you don't hearken to those things, yes, so you're just destroying you and your, your future. You're destroying your nation. You're holding us back, keeping us from those things. It's the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 5, and verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. That everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Whether the good or bad, you're going to what face the Most High. That is the time that because as of today, guess what? We're still in today. We can only live today, and that's what in the the, the repentance of our sin, repentance of our error. Because guess what? The nations are still going to be in charge. Until guess what? Our, all of our our elect are guess what? Are, are are still in sin. If we are still in sin and still iniquity, guess what? But by, by, by us being the examples and growing in there, just by, by you knowing knowing that you know now is very heavy. I get brothers coming into me, um, and they ask me these questions, and I always ask them when they, when they call or when they they come to me and they ask these questions, and I'm like, brother, how long have you been with us? How long have you been studying? All these things. And they want to know these things. And I guess when I ask them small things, brother, you, you have you been through uh, high holy days? No. Have you, uh, are you born in fringes? No, not yet. And I'm like, and I would say, oh, give me that scripture. Give me Ecclesiastes um, 3 and 21. Yeah, 3 and 21. This is what I always tell them. Because y'all your brothers want to come out deep. <clears throat> Y'all want to know well, all these things, but get these basic understanding, these understand, these, these, you can't get it right. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 3 and verse 21. Seek not out the things that are too hard for thee, neither search the things that are above thy strength. But what is commanded thee, think thereupon with reverence. For it is not needful for thee to see with thine eyes the things that are in secret. Be not curious in unnecessary matters, for more things are showed unto thee than men understand. It says, seek out things not too hard for thee. Things that you can't handle, the things that you can't break down, or why, why, why uh, this, happened, this happened in this book and that book. Little things, oh, what is the most high? Is this, is this, is this is this uh, so and so in the regeneration? Is it? Is this? You know what? what you want to ask some deep questions, or you want to know about this? Oh, this name meaning? 
And this person, this is, this is, that means this. No. Just follow the commandments. Practice those commandments. That's how it is. Psalm 111, he's going to reveal the understanding on you. When you keep the basic understandings and practice them, practicing them, you're going to re get revealed the understanding of the Most High, what he, what he wants you to do. And guess what? If the Most High gives you those uh, understandings and those deep sayings and stuff, I'll praise this. But is it going to change you? That is, it, is, it, is, it, is those deep sayings going to bring you back to uh, Deuteronomy 28, 1 and 15? No. Keeping the commandments are. Keeping the commandments are going to do those things. So remember that. So don't, 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 when you got deep questions, brother, if it's not, if it's not, if it's not on a precept sheet, we go, we're gonna ignore it. We ignore it because guess what? You if you don't, you don't, you got the precept sheet down, you don't got these under, uh, uh, basic understanding. You don't even know it now. If it comes out of the class and you receive it, you understand. <laughs> all praises, all praises to Most High. You know what I mean? But uh, that's it for the for the class. Um, all praises to Most High. Give me the opportunity to uh, give class. Uh, but let's get ready for the uh, headquarter class. So. Shalom, Israel. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, Please make sure you subscribe to this and join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.